Well, good morning, folks. Jason here. Uh, doing a video in my truck today, and it's October and lots of snow. It'll be gone by tomorrow. Uh, we had a good cold snap here. Doing it in my truck because uh, uh, one of our sons is doing school from home, and uh, I'm about to head to a meeting here in about 20 minutes. And uh, I thought this would probably be a better place to do the video. Anyway, uh, as you guys know, I'm going through... Uh, the Bible from beginning to end and today I read Psalm 60, 70, 76, 77, 78 and Psalm 78, 16 really uh, jumped out to me today and I thought I'd just share with you uh, the whole thing that I learned here. So Psalm 78, 16 uh, let me t give you the pretense or, or the how Psalm 78 goes. It's a song of a psalm of Asaph. So Asaph uh, is a Kohathite. Uh, Kohathites were in charge of uh, maintaining the tabernacle and the temple. And David actually made Asaph the leader of music in the tabernacle. And then when the temple was built under Solomon, he led the music. Uh, for Solomon's temple. And Asaph is uh, going through the history of Israel on how um, God led them out of Egypt and how God uh, brought them through the desert and uh, how they took over the promised land and they forsook God and God uh, turned them over to their enemies and then brought them back and, and that, that kind of stuff. And right up over here, it's in Psalm 78, 16, it's recounting um, when Moses struck the rock in the desert and water came out of the rock. And it says, he made streams come out of the rock and caused waters to flow down like rivers. So if you know your Old Testament history, Moses actually struck the rock twice. The first time, uh, the Israelites said, you brought us out to the desert to die. We're, we're going to die of thirst. God said to Moses, take your staff and strike the rock and water will come out. And he did. Really interesting. Then they were going to, they, they came around years later and they were going to die of thirst again. And God said, this time I want you to speak to the rock. But Moses was very angry at the Israelites. And instead of obeying God, Moses struck the rock again. Now water did come out, but God was very angry with Moses. And so angry, he said, you will not go into the promised land because of this. I'll let you see it from afar, but you won't go in. Why was God that angry? God was that angry because Moses distorted the gospel. You're thinking, how does that happen? Well, I want you to go back to Genesis chapter 2, verse 10. And it says, a river flowed out of Eden into the garden and split into four rivers. Okay, what'd you get in that, Jason? Well, we're going to do a little bit of jumping around. I want you to remember when Jesus is on the cross and the thief says to Jesus, Lord Jesus, please remember me when you enter your kingdom. And Jesus says, I tell you the truth. Today you will be with me in paradise. The Hebrew word for paradise is Eden. The word Eden, paradise, heaven, all interchangeable words. Now, when, when we think about heaven, 
there's a lot of people that say, you know what, when I get to heaven, I'm, I want to go see my grandfather or my grandmother or my sister or my wife or my husband or whatever. Let me assure you, heaven is heaven not because your loved ones are there. Heaven is heaven. Eden is Eden. Paradise is paradise. Because that's where Jesus is. I want you to think about that for a second. Now, Jesus also tells the uh, the Samaritan, the, the the Samaritan woman, that he offers living water. Anyone who drinks from his water will not thirst again. And as you go to Revelation chapter twenty-two, it says. From the throne came a river through the city. And there were 12 different types of trees. And they bore their fruit in season. And it fed the nations. Interesting. Where did this river come from? The throne. Where did it come from? in Genesis from Eden the throne who sits on the throne Jesus does so now back to striking the rock <clears throat> striking the rock is symbolic of nailing Christ to the cross and out of this flowed the living water but God then said to Moses, I want you to speak to the rock. You see, Paul writes that we now have access to the throne room of grace because of the sanctifying work of Jesus on the cross. We can go to him in prayer. We can go and speak to him. But Moses didn't speak. He struck therefore crucifying Christ again and it distorted the gospel Christ was crucified once for all of the sins of mankind you don't need to crucify him again and again and again his atonement for your sin on the cross was payment enough and God is very serious about his gospel. God is very serious on how you come to him. And so that's why Moses didn't go into the promised land. It's not that he disobeyed God because everyone disobeys God many, many times. It's because the disobedience to God in that matter distorted the gospel. Folks, the gospel is very important to God. We cannot change it. Have yourselves a great day.